So Republicans have blocked even debating and discussing this major voting rights bill that we've been talking about now for quite some time. And we are really now getting into sort of the most disgusting and destructive of American politics. And of course, huge blame goes directly to the Republicans who voted against even debating the voting rights bill. But also we can't ignore the fact that the great negotiation that uh, Joe Biden has claimed he would be able to do has not even led to a debate about the voting rights bill. And we're going to have video from the floor of the Senate uh, and and much more. And in fact, may, maybe we'll even uh, start there. This is the uh, moment where uh, Kamala Harris, who presided over the Senate during this vote, um, uh, announced that uh, the bill was uh, it wasn't we were not moving forward into debate. Take a look at this. The yeas are 50. The nays are 50. Three fifths of the senators duly chosen and sworn not having voted in the affirmative. The motion is not agreed to. Now, what you have to understand when you um, uh, evaluate this is that there really are two completely different realities on this issue. Mitch McConnell, for example, came out and said, we don't even really have a voting rights issue in this country. There aren't even people trying to suppress the ability of individuals to vote. He said this, I guess, with what, what for Mitch McConnell counts as a straight face. Let's take a look at what Mitch McConnell had to say. I mean, how do you say this with a straight face? How do you have the uh, gumption and uh, I mean, the, the tolerance for cringe to come out and say the following? And many of you have written about the subject of big lies. Well, the, the big, biggest lie being told in American politics in recent weeks has been that the states are involved in a systematic effort to suppress the vote. <laughs> That's just a why. Why would anyone think that that's going on? I mean, other than the fact that Republicans have been openly admitting it since at least 2012, when Mike Terzai said voter ID is going to make it so that Mitt Romney wins Pennsylvania, and then everything else that happened in the nine years that followed, and the 250 something bills across the country. Uh, those arguments are being made by people who obviously haven't read any of these new state laws, because that's not happening. As we all know, we had the biggest turnout. Uh, last year since 1900. Now, that's a red herring. That's a complete and total red biggest turnout since 1900. How many people lived in the United States in 1900? So th there's three or four different reasons why that's not a good argument. Number one, as the population continues to get larger and larger, you would expect more and more people to vote. Trump often points to, hey, I got 75 million votes. He really got 74 uh, th that, th you know, that that makes it hard to believe that I lost, given that 74 million people voted for me. Well, even more people voted for Joe Biden. Uh, and in addition to that, we don't know how many people wanted to vote. Uh, so it's just a complete and total red herring. Let's just look at a little bit more of this. There is no effort in any state in America to suppress uh, votes based upon uh, suppression of minority uh, participation. So that's a complete and total lie. I mean, it couldn't be it couldn't be a more dishonest thing to say. Um, so let's look at a little bit of the reporting about this CNN reporting Senate Republicans block signature Democratic election bill in key test vote saying that Senate Democrats suffered a loss when Republican opposition sunk their signature voting and election bill during a key test vote, underscoring the limits of the party's power with the narrowest possible Senate majority. A procedural vote to open debate was defeated by 50 50, falling short of the 60 votes needed. Democrats were united in favor after securing Joe Manchin support, but Republicans were united against it, causing the measure to fail to advance. Democratic senators have pitched the legislation as a necessary counter to state level efforts to restrict voting access. Republicans have decried it as a partisan power grab and a federal overreach into state voting and election systems. The article goes on to say Senate Democrats are already beginning to map out their next steps to draw attention to the issue and put the focus on a critical battleground state, Georgia. Now, one of the lies that they are already telling about Georgia is, hey, listen, voter purges are normal. This is one of the techniques 
or tactics that is being used by Republicans to hurt Democrats in elections. And it is to purge voter rolls, but to say every state does it. Now, it's true that every state does it, but with far less restrictive barometers than what Georgia is putting in place. And so you really have to look at the details. And this is one of those issues where if you're not following it relatively closely, you're not going to understand why the bullet points from Republicans fall short. And this everybody does it one is is uh, really a um, uh, an important example and an illuminating example, which is they insist every state has a system for deciding who should no longer be considered an active registered voter. And it depends on um, how recently you have voted and other factors. What's being done in Georgia is far more aggressive and it's being done in a very tailored way that while in an overt way, it doesn't target minority voters. It's focused on those more likely to be voting for Democrats who happen to disproportionately be non white voters. So I get it. People are busy. People are working. People have lives. So unless you're following it closely, you would not necessarily understand why uh, the claims that are being made are so deceptive. Now, I want to talk about one other thing here, which is the filibuster aspect of this. Uh, there is a good article in the L.A. Times, um, an editorial by the Times editorial board, which says Senate Republicans won't even consider voting rights. The filibuster must go. And it makes sense that there is increased pressure to do away with or modify the filibuster because it's not even that they're voting against the bill. They're voting against debating the bill and you need 60 vote votes in order to move forward. Uh, they wrote yesterday, as expected, debate on a bill to protect voting rights was blocked in the Senate when Democratic sponsors failed to garner 60 votes. But in reaching out to centrist Joe Manchin, Democrats indicated they were open to compromise. The shameful reaction of Senate Republicans, on the other hand, demonstrated that they are willing to ignore laws approved by Republican controlled legislatures that make voting harder. Those measures reflect the lingering malign influence of Donald Trump's big lie that the 2020 election was stolen. Um, they go on to say uh, about the filibuster, and I want to find the exact point where that is. Um, after Tuesday's vote, Schumer said that it represented the starting gun, not the finish line. Manchin and other and another Democratic senator, Kirsten Sinema of Arizona, have resisted the idea of abolishing the filibuster. But if Republican senators continue to stonewall reasonable legislation to protect the right to vote, those two reluctant Democrats must be pressed to recognize that at least we're protecting democracy is concerned. The filibuster must go. And this is absolutely and totally correct. Now, whether the filibuster must go in total, which potentially is going to have repercussions against Democrats when Republicans invariably take control again, um, at, at least in practical terms, you either need to reform it to require a talking filibuster. You either need to require the 40 no votes to be in the Senate at all times in order to continue. Something absolutely has to be done. I think at this point um, it's been clear, you know, if Republicans and Democrats were equal in their willingness to do whatever needs to be done to move a bill forward, then maybe we wouldn't be having this conversation. But Democrats have shown that uh, they are not willing to do what needs to be done uh, in the way that Republicans are to get moving forward on legislation that they claim is important to them. So something is going to have to be done to, to the filibuster. It absolutely is time. And again, if Republicans said, we believe we have a really strong case why this bill should not pass and we plan not to support it. But let's debate the bill and then make their case against the bill during the debate. I would have a different perspective, but they're saying no to even debating the bill. Something has to be done and the filibuster uh, is going to have to be a big piece of that. Do not forget that one of the best ways to support the David Pakman show is by supporting our awesome sponsors. And today, one of those sponsors is sheath underwear. The weather is warming up. It's hotter. It's stickier out there. And unfortunately for many of us, that comes with a lot of sticking and rubbing and chafing with traditional underwear. That is what sheath underwear has solved. Sheath has developed unique boxer briefs with multiple ergonomic compartments in the front 
preventing skin on skin contact. That means everything stays separate, dry, cool and comfortable with sheath underwear. There is no more sweating, no more chafing, no more readjusting. It's great. Sheath underwear is giving the David Pakman show audience 20 percent off when you go to sheathunderwear.com slash Pacman and use the promo code Pacman. Give sheath underwear a try. My experience has been great. I believe yours will be as well. You can find the link underneath this video and do not forget to use that promo code Pacman for 20 percent off.